G'day folks, Tony again here for more of the many lives of John Rando. We're stumbling and fumbling our way back uh, to Jopar now that we have enough copper wire to complete uh, Argive's introductory quest. Um, we also have leveled up a few times. We've got enough uh, enough clout here that we're able to uh, to start killing uh, at least some of these things that are giving us grief. Taking a little bit of bleed damage there from that chameleon. Healing up as the sun rises. So we've got our full hit point pullback. Hopefully at some point very soon, another Snapjaw Fort. There is just no end to the madness uh, of finding just... Uh, an endless stream of, of world locations. Um, there is an engraved item here that we're going to have a look at. We're going to see what it will tell us. Engraved with a scene from the life of the ancient sultan Murpur. While traveling through Mipur, Murpur stopped at a market in Aluva. At an obscure shop, she purchased a philosophical pair of boots and named it Philosophicalis Murpurboon. Then she went to a nearby tavern and lost Philosophical Calicus Murpaboon in a foolhardy bet. Isn't that how it always goes? Uh, she cursed the tavern and left Aluva. Good. Um, so we now know the location of Mipur. We have a quest to visit Mipur and to recover Philosophical Uh which I'm going to henceforth refer to as the boots. Uh, and let's grab that steel utility knife because that 1d4 is uh, is not too bad. A set of damage as well. We're probably overburdened now that we've picked up that mm, chain mail, and indeed we are. If we were to equip it uh, at 3, negative 1, that would give us armor value 4, dodge value 4. Uh, I'm not sure that's really worth our while. So let's pop our leather armor back on. Uh, three and five, I think, is much more nifty. And let's uh, let's just drop that back on the ground so that we can move it all. There's the fort. We're not going to go there right now. Well, we might have to go there right now. How did we get our way past this uh, previously when we were skedaddling around on the overworld map, I wonder? Uh, is there a way through here? It doesn't look like there is an easy way through. Apparently, we're not as lost as I thought anymore. So let's uh, continue maneuvering. Uh, yes. Yes, I would prefer to not die. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get back to Joppa fairly quickly. Yep, I am aware of that. Are we here yet? Please tell me that we're here. Any minute now, the sun is coming up. Uh, let's wander into Tam's store and buy anything. Anything at all for a drop of water. Uh... What can we sell? Rather, we can sell anything at all for a drop of water. We can probably sell most of this stuff. We're wearing a whole bunch of things. Some of this stuff's rusted. There's not a lot of it that we need. Um, what else do we have here? We don't need the glow sphere because we can see in the dark. We have a ton of weapons here that we can sell, so that will be nice as well. Uh, many things, so many things. Sell all of them. All of them, I say. We might keep the steel utility knife uh, just because it is steel. We're not going to sell any of the wire, obviously. That would be foolish. And we're also not going to sell any of the cool weapons that we've got. Actually, we might sell the second pump shotgun if we can get anything worthwhile for it. Uh... So $183 uh, dollars worth we've got there on the table now. Considering that we have a shotgun, I guess we can get as many shotgun shells as we can get our hands on. Um, but there doesn't seem to be an awful lot here. 
that we're going to want at this point in time. We can grab three copper nuggets to take the edge off of this trade here, which is going to be a little awkward. We might also grab a couple of water skins so that we have enough space to put all the fresh water that we're about to get. Um, carbide short sword. I mean, carbide is lovely, but we really want axes. I guess we can grab those bandages uh, for fun times. And I don't think there's anything else here that we really need to take uh, immediately. So let's take them off on that offer. We don't have enough things to carry that many drams. You bastard. You royal bastard. I am going to do this the harder and dumber way. To grab ourselves a couple of water skins. Uh, yep. Good. Hopefully this means that we're now uh, not going to die of thirst. We might just solve that immediately because that would be an embarrassing uh, way to go. Good. And now let's do all of that trading again uh, because why not? All right. All of these things that we don't need... All these weapons will uh, leave the steel utility knife there, as I said, because steel is uh, is steel. Uh, what else were we looking at? I think that might have been all. And then over here, we'll grab the shotgun shells again. We'll grab the bandages again. We'll grab those copper nuggets again. And now we are absolutely flush with fresh water. We'll just confirm that. Indeed we are. Yay us. And still plenty of dilute salt to uh, heal ourselves up when we start to burn. Let's go over to Argive. Let's pour some water on ourselves in the, uh, the time-honored tradition of the current incarnation of, uh, of John Rando. Four, because I only want to go through all those menus once. So much for my cunning plan. How about another four? I guess we're burning well because of all of the... Uh, because of all the hot deals that we just got from uh, from trading with, uh, with Tam. Hello, Argive. How are you? Here's some wire for you. 500 experience points, and we've got ourselves the Joppa Recoiler, and we'll have a chat with uh, Argive to accept the quest to uh, to head to the Barathrumites, uh, who are a fair way away, so we'll just zoom out here so you can have a look in case you aren't uh, overly familiar with this game. We will need to head our way up to the northeast, past the Rusted Archway. Uh, and all the way up here to the Grit Gate. And beneath the Grit Gate are the Barathramites, who are the next uh, mob of people that we're going to talk to on the main quest chain. But that is quite a way away. We might actually head over uh, to Tushur just to have a quick look at it uh, and see what's there. Uh, and let's do that right now. I would prefer to go to Tushur. Thank you, not Center. I always seem to be going to centre. Building, building, building. Interesting. Looks like there are a bunch of other NPCs here. Let's hope that they're friendly. So the Mechanimus Paladin, he marches forth in the holy metal raiment of the Acasa Finescence, ready to lay down his life in the name of his Argent Fathers. They are equipped with steel plate mail, steel buckler, weird artifact leather boots and are perfectly, impossibly neutral. So there's no way we're taking them out. Uh, we've got a Zealot here. We have a Luminous Horse Room, uh, which always makes me concerned that there may be uh, lurking Beths around. A Mechanimus Priest, who is also impossible. He recites the Canticles Cre uh, Chromaic with reverberant gusto, gesturing emphatically with his hands. Uh, and here is... 
Urumushum chrome torted. He preaches the chromaic gospel of the mechanimus. Precious saliva flies from his cracked lips, but he's too wrapped in the music of his words to notice. Uh, so lots of uh, lots of fun folk around here. Looks like they're uh, looks like they're camping at the moment. Um, hey everyone, good to see you. Any chance I can have a chat with you about cool things? Hello, Paladin. Can I trade with you? Mechanimus Paladin has nothing to trade. Live and drink. Uh, what about you, good priest? Ooh, some tradings. Lead slugs and plenty of them. I'll take those. And shotgun shells as well. How fortunate that we have met each other. Um... There's also a couple of weird artifacts here. How much money do we have to spend? $121. I think we can grab those. Why not? Why not, I say? Yep. We still have plenty of uh, plenty of fresh water here in our inventory. Nearly a full uh, water skin of them, but we now have two... Uh, Somewhere, two groovy weird artifacts. We're going to try examining them right now. A high explosive missile. Yeah. Nothing to use it in right now, but that's great. Oh, two of them, in fact. Fun times. They're weighing four pounds, uh, and if we ever find ourselves a missile launcher, that might come in handy. Uh, what about the zealot? Make an offering at the Argent Well. Pay homage to your fathers. Sure. We can probably do the water ritual here with uh, Urumushum, Chrome Torted. Uh, roots don't like us as much. Worms don't like us as much. But Water Baron's pretty fond of us now. Let's do some secret sharing. Uh, deep in Karakesh, that name stumbled upon a clan of trees. Yep, definitely going to tell you that. Uh, how about you also... Learn about a couple of other places that are nearby. Ooh, I would ask you to join me, friend. Uh, that would be nice, but we're not going to do that right now. I want to find out more cool stuff. Uh, shares an event from the life of a sultan with you. In 450, the people learned that that name had faked her death by switching places with her twin. Despite reports to the contrary, that name was alive and well. She was known thenceforth as the dominant spectre of Ekapad. Good times. Uh, what else can you tell me? Somewhere in Ekapad, that name came upon a river flowing backwards. For the rest of their life, she was obsessed with atomic clocks. I mean, I'm somewhat obsessed with atomic clocks myself. Inside a colossal hourglass, that name cemented a friendship with explorers by marrying Alabamrod. Good times. Eh, uh, sure. Fun, fun. Thanks for sharing that with me. Um, I'm going to go and have a look in this ruin now and hopefully not die horribly and embarrassingly uh, in front of everyone who's watching. All right. Can we pick this up? We can, and we did. So that's good. How do we get in here? Uh, bon voyage, other NPCs, wherever you're going. How do we get in? Is there actually a way in here? Is there going to be... Ow! Oh, okay. I moved north by attacking... Oh, I was attacking the thing that I didn't see was there that I'm now bleeding from. How clever of me. Uh, let's see if this bleeding stops naturally. It does. Let's move ourselves where we can hopefully rest until healed. And we can. And now let's have a look. Whoops. And see... If we can do anything. So we got uh, plus one to all of our uh, attributes there from hitting level six. So we don't have any negative penalties now. That's nice. Um, strength is now plus two. That's also nice. One mutation point. Um, should we put some more into flaming hands? I'm not sure that we should at the moment. I kind of just like stacking random mutations. I find it more entertaining that way. So it's just really the skill points for us to, to do anything with at this point in time. Now that we have ourselves 
uh, an axe equipped, that slender iron battle axe. Uh, let's see what else we can do with our axe proficiency. We need cleave before we can get charging strike. Cleave, whenever you hit an opponent with an axe, there is a 75% chance you cleave their armor, giving them a negative one penalty to their armor value. This penalty can stack a number of times up to half your strength modifier rounded up. I like it. I'm all for it. Let's uh, let's do the cleave. Done deal. All right. Rather than uh, tramping around amongst those jilted lovers all the way up there, did we already look at this statue? I think we might have already, but uh, let's just try it again. In case we didn't, we didn't. We've received a new quest, Recover Skull Skullica. Excellent. Uh, I have no idea where Skullica might be, but I'm sure it will be swell uh, if and when we ever do. How do we get into this place? It might actually be up this way that the uh, that, that party of NPCs went. There's some bedrolls in here. That's nice. A bit of a sconce in the wall, but I'm not really seeing a lot else at the moment. Could this perhaps be the actual ruin here rather than that big section in the centre that we were manoeuvring around? There's a baboon here. Uh, could this be the guardian of uh, of this place? I have a feeling there's probably... Aha! Uh -huh. I was about to say, I have a feeling there's probably some stairs down here, but I was wrong. There's a deep shaft heading downwards. We're certainly not going to jump into that without some uh, some mechanical wings or equivalent. Uh, and of course there's a salt hopper here. Uh, have they seen us? They have. So they can come on in. Uh, we can try shotgunning them. Uh, it, did it hit them? I don't think it did. So let's set them on fire. Because clearly that's a good way to go. We might also uh, start spinning some webs as we move away. So that should get them nice and stuck. Uh, and indeed it has. And hopefully this is going to allow us to do a reload. Whoops. Uh, and shoot again. And if we're still spinning webs, and we are, then once again, that's going to give us the opportunity, whoops, to move over here and take them down. All done. That spin web's quite handy. I wish I'd remembered that I had it earlier. Uh, but now we know, folks. All right. Hello. This could be the way in that we've been looking for. What have we got here? Another statue. Excellent. Kippur the second, the Bimish Scourge. A little bit more salt and history. Oops, that uh, that I haven't really read with any uh, with any degree of scrutiny right now. Maybe I should uh, be a little more discerning when I'm looking at those. The part that I really care about is getting quests. That's uh, that's really what I'm uh, what I'm hoping to find. So there is a way uh, in through the top here, which we wouldn't have gotten to past those uh, past those jilted lovers anyway. Very good. Little dead end. A little bit of burning. I wonder if by freezing ourselves we can put it out. That's probably overkill. Uh, all right. Let's get that dilute salt happening. We have uh, plenty of it right now. So let's go with four. And again, it didn't work. Are these fires getting uh, harder to put out? Are they becoming uh, more all-consuming? Do these spontaneous combusts just keep getting more and more drastic until uh, there's no way that we can ever put them out? Perhaps we'll look out. Salty water. All right, so there are two musket turrets through there. Don't know if we can work our way around to the side of them. Perhaps we can. 
Let's see if we can sneak around the back here. Oh, well, that one... Uh, that one hit us quite badly, so let's just move ourselves away again. We'll do a rest until healed. Uh, let's see if they get another l lucky shot. It's, uh, yeah, reasonably painful every time they do that, isn't it? We're going to reload our shotgun. And I'm going to try shooting him with said shotgun. And the problem is solved. Shotgun versus musket turret. Uh, shotgun wins. It looked like there. It looks like there was an NPC here that died and left us uh, a bunch of cool stuff. A slate frock. What on earth is a slate frock? Zero and two. That does sound pretty nifty. A frock of slate cloth. I'm sure. Uh, we'll grab that. I'm going to leave the other things. Actually, no, we'll grab that Desert Chris as well because they are pretty nifty. So we currently have Armor Value 3, Dodge Value 6, um, Armor Value 1, Dodge Value 8. I mean, that's nice and all, but I think we're going to need the, uh, the armor for the time being. So we know that there are some turrets in here. Typically, there are turrets when there's more treasury treasure. Grab that chair, aka strange tubes, because we don't know what it is. Still a few more rooms here. I wonder if there are any other critters waiting for us in here. Not seeing a lot, these ruins may be very old. Uh, and who knows what awaits in them. It's a big part of the appeal of this game is not knowing what's going to be lurking around any particular corner with any degree of certainty. So it looks like we found, whoops, looks like we found all the cool stuff. Uh, we are feeling mighty hungry. Whoops. So let's make ourselves a camp so that we don't have to be hungry anymore. Plus 10% hit points for the rest of the day. That's nice. Uh, we've explored all this area. Let's go back out to the map. Uh, and we might head over to where there are other things on the map. Let's have a look at Decagon Al Alalil. And we have a couple of Snapjaw forts that we can take care of uh, at a later stage. So this thing is sprinting now. I'm going to see if our spin webs plan works again. Where it gets stuck and, uh, and we shoot it with a shotgun. So that seemed to work pretty well last time. Uh, not working as well this time, which is something of a drag, but we do have a, a reasonable number of shotgun shells. And another 225 experience points comes our way. So I believe this over here was probably the statue that we looked at last time. But because my memory is terrible with this head cold, I'm just going to check. Yes, that is correct. All right, what do we have? We have that uh, clay urn that we picked stuff up from before. There's a doorway down the bottom here that we might be able to work our way into, so let's do that. Another deep shaft down into the ground. Uh, once again, we're not going to head that way. And not a lot going on through here either. Good times. Oh, hello. Uh, not terribly fond of chameleons. They have killed me on uh, way more than one occasion, so we'll shotgun them as well. How many shotgun rounds do we have? We have another 12. I should probably not be quite so uh, trigger happy with them. But it is hard to resist because shotguns are cool. <laughs> All right, what else have we found? Another door. Probably a bit of a higgledy-piggledy old ruin, this one. So I don't know that there's going to be all that much that we find in it. But there's only one way we're going to find out. And that's by poking around. Hello. That's another board done. We have butchery. I'm assuming that's why we're finding all of these things' tails. I keep doing that. 
Right. So nothing else immediately obvious around here, I don't think. We might have to make our way to those Snapjaw forts. See what else we can see. Lovely little door to nowhere there. All right, let's zoom back out. There are. Where are they? Where are these hostiles? Speak of which, there it is right there. It's a two-headed boar. Looks like it's been in the wars a little bit. And uh, further in the wars again. Good times. All right. We're going to zoom back in. We're going to go to Snapjaw Fort number one. Where is the main gate? There it is. So who knows how many things we might find in here, not just in terms of the Snapjaws themselves, but also treasure chests. Sometimes there's cool stuff. Sometimes there isn't. Snapjaw Scavenger's right hand. Lovely. That would be the uh, the Axie dismemberment coming into play. Steel things are always nice, so I'm going to grab them whenever I can. Uh, and for the most part, I think we're just going to wade through. We're just going to wade through folk here. Uh, hopefully taking them down. Fairly effectively without too much drama what are you actually hitting here is this a, oh it's the warlord of course i just couldn't tell because it was covered in blood uh why it was being so hard to kill come on down what do we got pretty normal stuff still pretty normal stuff keep having a poke about here's a chest Engraved black robes. Whoops. Tell me what they're all about. This item is engraved with a scene from the life of the ancient, ancient Sultan Mupur. At dawn under a marvellous and amber sky, the people of Tenepar Morass saw an image on the horizon that looked like an inkwell bathed in amber. It was Mupur, and after she came and left Tenepar Morass, the people built a monument to her and thenceforth called her inkwell in amber. Good times. So we don't really need those black robes. In fact, I don't think we really need any of those things, but that's okay. Because we still have this small mossy tube, which we're going to examine. It's a skulk injector. I'm going to pick that up. Thank you. And we'll leave the bow there because we have two shotguns and a carbide rifle. So I think we're good. Where is the way through? Here it is. The, uh, the stylings of these uh, Snapjaw Fort walls and manoeuvring around them uh, is very reminiscent to me of, uh, of exploring uh, around the very lo-fi maps of, of uh, gold box games like Pool of Radiance uh, quite some time ago, <laughs> now that I think of it. A uh, lot, of, lot of fun times... Uh, wading into the uh, the digital world of D&D back in that era. Anyway, enough of the uh, of the old person ramblings. How do we get into this one? There's a few snap jaws here outside. Let's go and tidy them up first. Come on now. There's a couple of archers shooting from a from a very long way away there. Another steel cookery. We'll pick that up. This one covered in blood. So that's nice. Uh, we're doing some very gentle bleeding there by the looks of it. Nice quick kill there. Isakari banner. Steel battle axe. 1d3 plus 1. I think that might do more than the one that we have. And it does. Uh, so let's remove that one. We'll pop the steel battle axe in there. We might try putting the uh, slender battle axe in the other one. And I think there's a steel, yeah, there's a steel short, yeah, short sword here. We'll grab that one too. And we'll go and keep tidying. Uh, Vine Reaper, how much do they do? 1d3 plus 1. What type of weapon are they? Weapon class axe. Isn't that handy to know? 
with a penetration of six. Uh, looks like it might be time to uh, to rework this again. Six penetration, 1d3 plus one. It's the same as a steel battle axe, which will pop in the other hand. So now we have a dual wielding vine reaper battle axe for a marauder with ghostly flames coming out of their hands and some pretty snazzy leather moccasins on the feet. Um, if that's not stylish, I don't know what is. And of course, just to keep things stylish, we're, uh, we're starting to burn. Let's, uh, let's solve that burn with some more dilute water, pouring it all over ourselves. And let's really lash out. Let's go with eight. Why not? And it still didn't solve the problem. How bizarre. Let's, uh, let's try another eight. Yep, that'll do it, surely. And I am correct. Uh, so we've just poured salt all over everything, which is probably not the best, but that's fine because I wasn't going to use any of it anyway. But I do want to look at this painted Sandals of the River Wives. A pearl fastened these well-crafted sandals. The natives believe they belong to the nymphs who inhabited the river beneath Red Rock. Plus five mood spe move speed and more mupur. While travelling through the astronomer's precinct of Unashur, Mupur stopped at a market in Abitum. At an obscure shop, she purchased a shrewd dagger and named it Shrewd Father Murpurboon. Then she went to a nearby tavern and lost Shrewd Father Murpurboon in a foolhardy bet. She cursed the tavern and left Ab uh, Abitum. Uh, Murpur, I'm picking up a pattern here in your life history. Um, I'm afraid to say it might be you. Uh, okay, so we've discovered another location. We're going to visit there. We're going to recover a thing. Uh, let's celebrate by picking that up. Uh, salt encrusted, seal battle axe, utility, whatever. We don't need any of those. We're good. Let's rest until healed. Uh, and we're not hungry. We're not thirsty, but we are out of time for this part of the Let's Play. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Let your friends know if you think they might enjoy it. And come back again soon for more of the many lives of John Rando. Thank you.